I don't know about that, but I never got sick. The smell is really strong. It's like rotten flesh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. By Oprah, <laughs> by Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> hey, it's Miru Beauty. Today we will just be talking about fun facts about the Filipino women. I am sure many of you guys experience some of these Filipino habits that is maybe a little bit strange to you. You never understand why Filipinos do this or that, but you just follow it. And some of you maybe get used to it already. I will try my very best to explain how these habits became habits, even if I don't really know how, to be honest. But because it is fun to know, let's talk about it. And these habits are not toxic, okay? It's just really fun to talk about and it is good to share with you. Who knows, maybe this will help you in your future trip here and you won't be surprised anymore or you will be cautious. So let's get into it. I will start with one of the most done unconsciously habits in the Philippines. Hey, have you seen my phone? Hey, where's my phone? I admit I myself do this when I am doing something like when I'm washing the dishes or washing the clothes and I couldn't use my fingers for pointing something. So originally we use our fingers to point something or when giving direction like there, it's there or you can go there. We always use our fingers to um, point a direction or point something that uh, someone is trying to find. We use our lips as an alternative when our hands are occupied or when, our, when we're doing something using our hands. And most of the time when we use our lips, it's because we are uh, busy cleaning, like cleaning, maybe um, wiping the floor, wiping the sink, and washing our clothes, washing the dishes. So instead of pointing with our fingers like that, we would use our lips like that. With the eyebrow, raising the eyebrows like that. We would pout it like that towards the direction of the thing or person, depending on what is the other person is asking you. I know you guys don't do this. You would say, where is it? Or where is the person or the object they are trying to find? Like, oh, I saw it on the table or um, it's inside the fridge, it's under the chair. But for us Filipinos, we usually don't say where you can find it. We, we would just uh, say there and then point with our fingers or our lips like there or there, like, <laughs> like that. Don't worry guys, they're not going to kiss you if ever you encounter this. They're just telling you where you can find the thing or person or whatever. The next one is, um, okay, some Filipinas um, take this custom abroad even. When they migrated, they would still do this and make all their visitors do this too. And this is a famous... Your shoes! <laughs> Okay, so the only reason I know why Filipinos have this habit is that we are very meticulous in cleaning our houses. I know you might raise your eyebrows and say, really? Because I know the Philippines is infested with rats around and bugs. Yes, that is true, especially in the streets of Manila. That is why we do our very best to keep our houses clean to avoid this visitors from entering, from coming to our homes. These rats and um, cockroaches and bugs. But sometimes it's just too impossible to avoid these creatures because they are just everywhere outside. They would infest our homes if it's not clean. If there, is, if there are food debris on the floor or on the counter, on the sink or on the stove. These are the main things that we always clean in our homes. Regardless of the size of the house, we clean it very well. We don't just sweep the dust on the floors. We brush it and we clean it with water and soap. If it's a wooden floor, then we would clean the dust first and then brush it with coconut husk to make it shiny like glass. That is the main reason I can think of. 
why we don't like to bring our slippers or our shoes inside our houses especially if we come from the outside so keep that in mind guys when you are visiting a filipino home make sure that they are bringing their slippers in before you do if you see piles of slippers and shoes just outside the door then you might want to leave your footwear there also or else you would have people look at you strangely <laughs> or the owner would scream your shoes <laughs> there are some people who do that me also like when i have visitors and i just cleaned i cleaned especially because i know i have visitors that they're coming and then they would let their slippers in or their shoes and i was like no your shoes remove it <laughs> Okay, so the third might disgust some of you or some of you might also think that this habit is just being no table etiquette or no manners. But it is just part of our culture and it's totally normal to us. I've seen some foreigners um, feel disgusted about it. <laughs> Yes, we do it all the time in restaurants, at home, with friends, with our bosses. Everyone does this anywhere if it's possible. <laughs> I do it when I really like the food. I feel like the food tastes better when I eat it with my hand. Don't be disgusted, guys. If you plan to go here, you will likely experience this. It is fun. It makes the food better tastes better i even read a study that uh, says when you eat with your hands the flora in the fingers is swallowed <laughs> it might sound really a little bit gross but it says that it is beneficial for health and for various body parts such as the mouth throat the intestine um, and it promotes healthy digestion in the gut. It also says that handling food with your fingers releases digestive juices and enzymes. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I never got sick or got a belly ache after eating with my hands. So yeah, of course, we make sure that our hands, our fingers are clean before we eat. Just before and after we eat, we wash our hands. Sometimes there are smelly dishes like tuyo, the dried fish, if you're familiar with that. It is very smelly if you eat it with your hand. The smell will stay in your fingers for two days. <laughs> it's fine with me though, but for, for the others, it is gross smelling that. Because the smell is really strong. It's like rotten flesh. <laughs> Sorry guys. That's um, one of the Filipinos' favorite dishes. We were taught at a young age to eat with our hands. When we were kids, we would eat a soup with our hands. So imagine guys, when, they fin when we finish eating, our fingers would wrinkle, you know, here. It would wrinkle from being soaked in the soup. It might really sound so gross for you, but yeah, enough for that. Let's move on to the next one. Hey, I'm hungry, what's for breakfast? Rice. Hey, I'm hungry, what's for lunch? Rice. Hey, I'm hungry, what's for dinner? Rice, we have rice, eat rice. <laughs> rice three times a day. I would even eat rice four times a day. Aside from rice is the cheapest food here and um, it's e the easiest to prepare. It promises strength and fullness. I saw some families who eat rice only for their meal, like no dish. They would sprinkle salt on it or fish sauce. And, and that's it. Because rice makes you feel full and takes effect the moment it hits your stomach. Because it contains a lot of fiber, which can help you feel full and satisfied longer. A normal Filipino who is not picky with food would buy two cups of rice and one small dish just so there is something to go with it. That is how they do so they can save up to one cup of rice costs 10 pesos only. So two cups is 20 pesos plus the dish of 30 pesos. A total of 50 peso meal gives you energy for another five working hours. Rice is life. <laughs> Ano ba? Bakit na papayong? Hangit kaya? Tignan mo nga, baka masunog yung balat ko. Asit naman, transparent yung payong mo. Kakatulong ba yan? Okay, so this is just another skin talk again. Non-stop skin talk. But this is just fun. 
Yes, right. The obsession with whiter skin. A normal Filipino will not walk in the street in the middle of the day without an umbrella. Because most Filipinas have their skincare routine. Most of these whitening products instruct the users to avoid going under the sun even if they provide sunscreen. Those chemicals are very harsh on the skin and exposure to um, direct sunlight could cause dark spots and scars while using the product. They would take pain just so they can have whiter skin. And a little bit of sunlight, they would use an umbrella. It would really hurt them. They think that they will get darker. But of course, if someone plans to walk um, for hours in the middle of the day, when the sun is at its strongest, you should use something to have a bu buffer from the sun, right? So that's normal because it, may, it might really damage your skin. But a little sunlight won't hurt. It's even good for the skin in the morning. So I hope our ladies here would learn how to love the natural skin they have. A small sun that touches their skin won't hurt them, won't hurt you girls, it won't. It's even good for the skin if you take just a just an enough amount of sun. Yeah, I'm dark, I have a dark skin, I have a darker skin than normal Filipinas here. But I don't know, I don't have wrinkles, I don't have dark spots in my in my body. My color is the same all over my body. I think that is, um, that is an indication that the skin is healthy. If you have the same color in every part of the body. But of course, it's, not, it's different when, when you have tan lines, of course, that's different. But tan lines are temporary and they're also nice sometimes. That is correct. Filipinos take pictures and selfies anywhere all the time, mainly because of social media, I believe. They like um, sharing and making people see how they are doing and where, where they are going. Uh, they want to have something to post, especially when we are enjoying. We like to keep memories, something that would remind us that we've been in, in this beautiful beach, this beautiful city. Regardless of what mood they have, they will post it. They would take a picture like this and then post it on Facebook or Instagram with the caption. If you look at what you have in life, you'll always have more. If you look at what you don't have in life, you'll never have enough. Oprah Winfrey. In my opinion, there is nothing wrong with this, but too much is not good also. Especially if they start posting about their private life, like when they are having issues with their partners, they would post it on Facebook and everywhere on social media. All their friends and family reading it. It's, it's a little bit toxic too, because of the cheese miss here and the people would start talking about them. If your partner is like this, tell her to avoid doing it because it could hurt the relationship so bad. It's not healthy to post all the personal issues. It causes trouble. One day she will post one picture of you both, so sweet. And then the next day she would post how much she is annoyed with you because of not texting her for two hours. And others would even post 20 pictures all at the same time. I remember my sister, she would unfollow people who are spamming her feed with their redundant photos. So, so that's it guys. Maybe I can make a part of this because there is so much more. But we will talk about that next time. If you want to share your experiences, please write it down in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed this video guys and thank you and see you in my next video. Because it is fun to know, let's talk about it.